Hello, my wonderful spirit guides. Today I am going to be reacting to Wise Blood Titanic Rising and it has been a long time coming. I was getting uh, requests for this back when I did my first ever video, um, reaction video. Um, so yeah, I'm finally doing it. I don't know why it's taken so long. Sometimes these things just happen, but I did a poll and Wise Blood did win and obviously on the poll I'm going to be doing all the artists that are on there anyway at some point but I just wanted to know what was what was pined for the most so yeah I'm just going to get into it if you'd like to become a patron please do all the links for that will be in the description and what the tiers mean and so on also follow me on Instagram I shall follow you back and like and subscribe because it really helps my channel out and comment too because I love reading your comments but um, yeah, let's get into it. Okie dokie, the first song is called A Lot's Gonna Change. And I'm gonna get the lyrics up for this album as well, actually. All right, let's do it. Let's actually do it. <laughs> like a spooky sci-fi movie. To a very David Bowie-esque piano. <laughs> if I could go Sorry, I haven't paused yet. I'm just so hooked on the production. It's so... Uh, I can't get my head around it because it's not like super clear in a sense of like... Like it's not meant to be. It has a very old fashioned feeling to it. Definitely, definitely a Joni Mitchell feeling with the vocal. And also just like that old kind of 50s sound as well. Uh, like old movie sound, old theater sound love songs and jazz um so yeah I'm, i think i'm just trying to get my head around it at first because it sounds like one of those songs but with like a kind of tense progression where you don't quite know where it's gonna go uh or where it's gonna land so you're kind of on the edge of your seat listening to it yeah reminds me of being uh, one of the outdoor cinemas it's making me think of greece to it as well, weirdly. That was an interesting progression, but it made me take a prog rock as well. I, I did say that during, but sometimes I don't know if you can hear me all the time, but um, <laughs> just with those like kind of expansive moments in a way it changes very like uh, abruptly and in unique ways. Um, that was really cool. I, like when I paused the first time, when I worked out for a moment and tried to like, you know, uh, get in there a little bit, it was cool when I came back into listening I felt more sunk into it and more imagery came, like the like outdoor cinemas in Greece and so on like that. Um, I could hear more textures in different ways. So yeah, I'm gonna have to say like, I really like the song, but I need to listen to more to see what the vibe is um, because I don't know yet. It's not one that just hooks me and I'm like, wow, like the production, yeah, was insane and cool, but I don't know what I feel about it yet. I'm just like, okay, cool. Let, let's get on to the next one basically. <laughs> Next one's called Andromeda. I like that a lot. Andromeda's a big wide open galaxy. I love the melody, love the rhythm. It's gorgeous. I'm really turning some time. Yeah, gorgeous. I 
make the song lovable, not just likeable. It takes one little bit. Sometimes it could take one little bit, like that lazy, smooth guitar, to then make the rest of the song feel uh, leveled up. Because I feel so good, like my endorphins are so like lifted from that moment. I already liked the song, but when that moment came and I, I loved it, and then the rest of it, I love as well now. You know, it like brings you up, so then you feel love anyway, so then the love transcends onto the rest. You get it. <laughs> Something's better than nothing. Yeah. Oh, so that I thought it It's like being in a beach in space. I love that one. That one was amazing. <laughs> that one was amazing. Um, yeah, I was just about to say that a day to try. She, before she was going, try and try. I was like imagining it doing that in the previous time she said it, but I'm really glad she did it at the end. Um, yeah, loved it. Loved the guitar. Oh, what the hell? Oh, I'm not really getting that deep into the lyrics, if I'm honest. Um, Listen, I imagine they are deep and poetic and telling a story and whatever, but I'm getting very, I think I'm just getting used to the sound at the moment. So if I don't go on about lyrics all the time, it's probably because it's one of those albums that like, I, I don't know, I'm just not there yet with it. Like, I'm not saying that they're not good lyrics. Actually, they're lovely and I'm following them. And I'm just going, ooh, ah, <laughs> you know, when I see something I like, reacting that way. But um, I'm not going to be deeply looking into them, I don't think, today. Um, unless there's one that really stands out, you know, uh, lyric-wise. Then I usually do. Uh, but anyway, wow, fucking loved it. Loved it. Had such a, yeah, at one point I could see, like, the world, but the world was, like, one big beach, and I could see her standing on it, like, the, and you could see the world from, like, the moon or something. So, like, the world was, like, a beach, and there was palm trees, and she's just singing on it like that. I thought it looked like a cool music video sort of thing. Yeah, very good. Okay, next one is called Every Day. Kind of an aggressive piano there, and then really pretty on top. Wake up, baby, it's getting late now. It's yeah, this one gives me Fiona Apple a little bit, day. and massively Joni Mitchell. But that's not enough. I got this. Like, uh, it is Joni Mitchell, isn't it? Hang on. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is. Um. Yeah, I don't know a lot from Joni Mitchell, but we had to, in uni, we stu studied folk for a little bit, and she's like part of an American folk sort of acoustic singer-songwriter sort of thing. And so we had to learn, my voice is a bit croaky uh, at the moment, unfortunately, um, but I just want to sing the chorus because I absolutely loved singing it. The, and it was really hard to like uh, um, get the timing right, I remember when I was learning it because of the way she uh, does her words. But she did, um, I was a free man in Paris. I felt better than alive. Nobody was calling me up for favors, and no one's future to decide. And if I go back there tomorrow, I'm for the work of taking on. Stuck in a store, making machinery behind a popular song. <laughs> I freaking love that. Uh, yeah, the verses were difficult to sing as well, but um, so fun. And I feel like the words have stuck in my head because it actually took time 
to try and learn it. When you get an easy song, sometimes the words and everything goes because like it's just a generic sort of melody. But anyway, enough about that. Joni Mitchell and obviously Wise Blood's voice have a very similar thing. Wise Blood was probably very, very, very inspired by Joni Mitchell. And you're probably screaming going, yes, she was. <laughs> so like, um, yeah, it's not exactly like a, I don't think it's one of those things where I'm like, oh my God, do you think that she was inspired by Joni Mitchell? It's so obvious that she definitely was. Um, but that's beautiful. And I love it when you get people who are inspired by certain people and they keep bringing it through the generations. It means we just get more of that amazing legendary sound, uh, but just tampered with and changed to be uh, unique as well. So love it. Ah, okay, let's keep going. Always trying to make my keep her mind. It gets me every time. It gets me every day. about that ending at first when it's like din da din da din da I did you know I was rocking my head back and forth because it had a rocking motion and there was something about it that felt like time ticking by but mainly the back and forth like that like a rocking motion a bit of insanity right however it didn't make me feel insane it was just it it was quite nice actually but now as it's caught sort of crumbling apart as the instruments become almost like they've fallen apart I don't know not not literally but uh yeah it's a little bit like oh where am I there were little moments in there as well that reminded me of one of my uh, favorite bands uh The Doors I might actually look into that song so there were moments in there that I was reading where I was like huh oh it doesn't have anything written about this one <laughs> there was like some written about the other ones but but um Oh, it's funny, at the very start, I said it kind of reminds me of Fiona Apple and someone commented, love the Fiona vibes on this one. So, <laughs> yes, I'm glad, I'm glad. On some of the lyrics, I clicked on them. Uh, the true love is making a comeback for only half of us. The rest just feel bad, doomed to wander in the world's first rodeo. I clicked on those and there's a little bit written here saying, in a world dominated by Tinder and other online dating sites, only those fit to be immediately judged by a picture and short profile can succeed and find love. The other half are left trying and failing at reeling someone in. The delivery of the first line, true love is making a comeback, almost tricks the listener. It sounds when isolate, sorry, whenever I go on Genius, it like jumps up and down all the time. It does my actual head in. It, when it's isolated, it sounds grandiose and optimistic, and Merring lets the line linger just long enough for the listener to believe that it, that's it. Then comes the catch for only half of us. It's also worth noting that the line was important enough to spawn merch with the phrase. Ah, that's cool. Yeah, I, and that line did actually stand out when I read it, so yeah, that's good that it's been made into merch. Very cool. All right, next song is called Something to Believe. Drank a lot of coffee today. A case of the empties, the ruler of my world. Okay. Living on the fault Yeah. 
focus on. song um i'm not reacting heavily to it because it's just very um it's just beautiful and lovely but it's not it's not capturing me it's just it's just an easy listener um i am quite tired though i've been going through a lot of uh changes recently um so yeah i'm a bit like my eyes are like uh heavy so maybe that's something to do with it but it's okay I like it, it's beautifully done. I, I love that though. A kind of lazy beach sound again. Okay. I think like I put a little bit too much pressure on myself sometimes because I'm reading and following the lyrics but following the lyrics is making me tired. I just want to close my eyes and listen to it but then I feel like I can't do that because it's going to look boring so I'm like looking at the lyrics to see if I can get something from that to talk about but it's the type of music I do just want to close my eyes and listen to the details and move of it, flow of it so I think I'm just going to be put less pressure on myself. I am tired and um do it listen the way I want to listen to it and hopefully you enjoy it anyway um you know even if I don't have so much to say I mean I always have a lot to say you know what I mean <laughs> lyrically I guess I guess um I did like the way that one ended more than it started um felt a little bit like maybe slightly generic maybe a little bit boring some degree apart from like the beautiful you know production that's going on and instrumental parts it was yeah maybe just a little bit lackluster for me but then it built so yeah all right anyway next song is titanic rising which is the title track so let's go for it right gonna be sinking into it okay oh it's just an instrumental <laughs> okay so i guess i will just be sinking into it it's interesting having like the title track as like a um interlude <laughs> mm. Interesting. Okay. Is there going to be some sort of changeover in sound? I don't know. Oh, this song. This song now is called Movies, and I have heard this on a live stream. However, I heard it a long, long time ago. Never listened to it again because I did feel like I was going to do the, a reaction to this album at some point, so I listened to it once and it's left my memory. All I remember is a very sci-fi sound, that's all I remember. So let's go for it. <laughs> yep, <laughs> definitely. It's definitely sci-fi. Augmented keys and so on. This is how it feels to be in love There's no books anymore Really reminds you of David Bowie, it really does. It's like a, it's like a wave. Absolutely beautiful. Wow, yeah, yeah. I love the lyrics. I 
right, let me pause it before we get into that masterpiece of a crazy, crazy bit of a masterpiece there. Um, but yeah, something about that is so beautiful. The way it just like literally, the vocals are very lo like long, drawn out, but like and beautiful, and then still just that thing underneath the and carrying on underneath, and it being about movies is interesting because it's got such a sci-fi feeling to it. Um, but it's about movies, uh, it's less cinematic than some have sounded, like when I think of um, A Lot's Gonna Change, that almost felt more cinematic than the song Movies, uh, and movies are played in cinemas. Not saying you can't get sci-fi movies, <laughs> you hear me, but um, yeah, and I love that, I, I love all the lyrics to this one, I might take a, li a deeper look um, when it, once it's finished, but um, I'm a huge movie fan, and uh, so it makes a lot of sense. strings it always does it for me gives it that very cinematic feeling Ooh, turning off that movie Whew. it's like the television being turned off oh that one's just stunning and i feel so much better just like closing my eyes sinking into it moving with it oh that's the way i love it <laughs> Especially sounds like this, which are cinematic, are layered and so on with like gorgeous voices. It's it, it's hard to just sit there and be like, you know, I, yeah, you've got to let go when you listen to that. I love that too, this bit. Some people feel what some people don't. Some people watch until they explode. The meaning of life doesn't seem to shine like that screen. When I heard her say that, it... um it really made me th feel something and think about something. Uh, it made me feel uh, like this feeling of when we watch a movie, we empathize and feel the pain of what someone could be going through, even if we've not experienced it ourselves. And we, or like if someone's doing something amazing or something scary, we can literally feel the emotions just from someone acting and like the music and the scenes and like how it's all built to just like invoke emotions. And the thing about movies it is literally about invoking emotions and invoking thoughts um and that's why they're so enjoyable it's like playing with thought playing with emotion um it's lovely going along for the ride and i, I just i love film i love film i love tv shows i love it all and then she says the movies i watched when i was a kid the hopes and the dreams don't give credit to the real things i love the movies and um yeah that makes those a sense because like it's like being like oh you know when you watched a movie growing up you thought that's what it would be like uh, like love you know romance or becoming a superstar or whatever but um it's not quite reality if you know what i mean but that's why i love film you can get lost in it for a little bit <sighs> very good i really like that and i love the movies too my girl <laughs> next song is called mirror forever Ever gonna give you a trophy for all the pain and the things you think I'm gonna love this no one. one knows but you giving me a the, the underside of the spelling album, you know, I turning wheel me. album. Just say the word maybe wow. know that I'll be there. Can't be in your 
it that a lot. Bringing it right back down. I don't think I even paused, did I? No, I don't think I did. Um, yeah, just really liked it. Really felt like the vibe of that one. I really liked how it was actually not that complex, as in, obviously there's complexities in all music, but it wasn't like overly cluttered or had too many instruments. It had a very steady beat and a simple kind of sound to it, apart from obviously some of the beautiful harmonies that come in and so on like that, and little moments. But um, that was gorgeous. My favourite bit was when um, she says, you threw me out the Garden of Eden, and those little uh, kind of medieval sort of sounds started playing. It made me think of Bjork a lot, and um, I liked that a lot. It had a very pink tone to it. Wow, okay, brilliant. Next song is called Wild Time. Okay, we're getting a bit of acoustic guitar here. I like it, I like that. Yeah, I really like that. Ooh, yeah, that piano. And the strings. Can't go wrong with that. By the bottles that broke you from the solace you see. It's interesting, I'm not singing a lot with the songs because like I was saying about the Joni Mitchell situation, the timing and the melodies and the choices of the notes are unique and they will take time to learn. Um, I love that about it because it keeps me guessing, keeps me wondering, keeps me alert too. Beautiful. I love. to forever. Fucking hell that though, what the hell? I loved it. That one, that one was incredible. <laughs> that was incredible. I loved it wholeheartedly. There'll be moments where I wanted the notes to go somewhere else, right? I'd be like, oh, can you do this? Oh, like almost trying to direct it. So I'd be like, oh, I'd like it to go here, but it wouldn't go to where I wanted it to, but where it did go was somewhere better <laughs> you know somewhere just as cool or better or more interesting something that my brain needs to learn rather than you know control oh brilliant i loved it that was a brilliant one wild time and the lyrics very strong throughout wild time Nati natalie describes loving in a painful and burning society as the title says it's a wild time to love 
and live. Yeah, I get that fully. And that's what I got from reading it. Right, next one is called Picture Me Better. Picture me better I finally found the time to write you this letter Can't help to smile with those eyes you shine Interestingly, she's she's talking about love very frequently on this album, actually, and it being, you know, always something like lonely in some ways, or love being difficult or whatever. And here it seems like a very endearing, loving song, but maybe it's familial. Um, <clears throat> just want to have a quick look who it might be about. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, that makes a hundred percent sense. This song is about a friend of Wise Bud who unalived themselves. Picture Me Better is the cherry on the cake because it's very old school. It's about a friend of mine who did what I just said while she was making the album. Oh, I, I knew it was about something, someone who she loves basically in, in a way that isn't romantic. Wow. That is so Disney. Give me like a Cinderella feeling. sort of like major seventh chord or something it was just so oh heavenly oh what a sad song and um if i could have seen you just once more tell you how much you're adored there's no point anymore very sad very um i hear it i hear that that's a very common thought in those situations of course Anyway, before I get too sad and think about it too much, I think we should just head to the last song now. Okay, this is the last song and it's called Nearer To Thee. Oh, it's just an instrumental, actually. Ah, oh, okay. I'm a bit sad about that. I was hoping that, yeah. Interesting. Okay, okay. Gorgeous. Okay, right, let's get into it. Let me stop the recording. Right, final thoughts. Interesting, because I didn't love every song. It wasn't an album that went wow to me. However, I do feel like with time it could if I give it the chance. If I give it the chance, I think it could really mean something to me, do something for me. But um, I'm not entirely sure. I loved the songs Andromeda. I loved movies. I loved Wild Time. I think those are my three favourites. When I think of A Lot's Gonna Change, I think I might have liked that as well quite a bit. Um, compared to one, say, like, Something to Believe. Mm. Wasn't the best. Um, it's not really, it's funny because of course, listen, I'm a Lana Del Rey fan and I know that Wise Blood and Lana Del Rey friends and they sing together, 
but there is still different vibes going on. And just because I like Lana Del Rey doesn't mean I have to like this, you know? Um, as much as it's produced beautifully and whatever, there were moments where I felt a little bit empty. I didn't feel enough, uh, apart from particular moments or particular songs. And there were moments in there that were just like igniting and her use of harmonies, the way she layers them into chords, like an organ, phenomenal, that's so unique to her. Her voice sounds like ribbons, like actual silk ribbons the whole way uh, through. It has a very ribbon kind of sound. I feel like you have to be in a particular mood to listen to it. Uh, personally, I feel that way. Because um, it's very just like beautiful, really, and relaxing. Um, I felt like she could have done music with Aldous Harding, Perfume Genius. I think she might have sang with Perfume Genius at one time. But yeah, she's got that folky kind of voice, that classical voice too. Maybe even St. Vincent she could have a sing with too. Yeah, interesting, very interesting. And I'm looking forward to editing it and picking up on new little things that I can't pick up on first reaction. And just remember, first reactions are always, well, what they are, first reaction. Um, so yeah, thank you so much. And I really hope you enjoyed my reaction to it and the moments where I just was really loving it. And yeah, let me know what your favorite song is and like, what this album means to you. Like, is it one that you listen to every day? Is it one that you just really enjoyed when it came out? I, lo I love knowing, especially when I am not like the biggest fan of an album. I love to know the details of why you love it. Um, it actually inspires me to like it more. So yeah, anyway, and it's not to say that I don't like it because I actually really do like it. It just wasn't like a wow, like a big hit, if you know what I mean. But anyway, yeah, I shall see you next time. Bye.